Welcome. Vincent Mezzo, Director of Education for Kettlebell Concepts here. Welcome to the IFET webinar. Tonight we'll be talking about IFET, Integrated Functional Explosive Training. We'll be talking about mind, movement, and muscle, and how we, how we can help our clients self-actualize while meeting their fitness goals. Come on over. With the IFET training, we're looking to create a physical culture rooted in research and tradition. We're looking to educate clients to see through the smoke and mirrors of consumer products and as seen on TV brands. We're looking to empower clients to self-actualize through mind, movement, and muscle, and men's sauna and corpora sano, a sound mind in a sound body. IFET has an underlying reason for its creation. It's been many years in the making, really all the way back from the 1800s and even earlier with the ancient Greeks. But before we get into that, it's important to appreciate that in our country, we don't have a physical culture. We have a sports culture. Children play a certain sport and they identify as a baseball player, a soccer player, oh, I play basketball. They play fall soccer, and then in the winter they play indoor soccer, and then in the summer they go to soccer camp, but they don't learn the fundamental movements or reinforce the fundamental movements that are necessary for proper functioning. When we talk about fundamental movement skills, we mean the movement skills of rolling over, crawling, creeping, sitting, standing, walking, and object manipulation. These skills then become functional movement skills like walking, running, jumping, sliding, hopping, leaping, as well as object control skills like throwing, catching, striking, bouncing, kicking, pulling, and pushing. The underlying developmental reflexes involved in all these skills include the symmetric tonic neck reflex, the asymmetric tonic knee neck reflex, the tonic labyrinth reflex. These ideas and these concepts have been around developmentally for 70, 60, 50 years easily. We've even seen the fitness industry move towards a movement-based approach. The pillars of movement, primitive movements, primal movements, all of these things have been talked about, but they go back to the idea of fundamental and functional movements, which is what gym teachers, physical educators, and pediatricians look for to make sure children are developing in the correct developmental sequence. In the IFET programming, we take a constraints-based approach to motor learning, meaning that when people learn skills, they have to constrain the degrees of freedom at the joints. These degrees of freedom are constrained very often by certain movement subsystems, such as the deep longitudinal, anterior and posterior oblique, and lateral subsystems. So in addition to creating a solid foundation of fundamental and functional movement skills, we're also very much using these biomechanical or anatomical constructs to help people better actualize and develop these skills. Ultimately, the central nervous system in movement is the foundation for the pyramid that results in better cognition and higher intellect. We see in this pyramid of learning that the central nervous system, awareness of two sides of the body, motor planning, reflex maturity, body schema, many of the things that we talk about in level two of KBC are really the foundation for higher cognitive processing. 
Getting back to the idea of mens sana and corpora sano, a sound mind in a healthy body, ultimately we're looking at helping people self-actualize. It's not just about six-pack abs and Brazilian butt lifts. There's more to what we do in fitness. And we see very clearly that when the fitness gram from the Cooper Institute is administered to school-age children, the more of the fitness gram components where they score average or above average, the higher their reading and math scores. For each additional fitness component that they score, up to six components, those children have the highest cognitive ability at that age. And this is true for fifth graders and ninth graders. And now we see many, many research studies that look at the effects of resistance training, the effects of exercise for the older population. We're going to look a little bit more at some of the exercises involved in the IFET training. Lateral movements, diagonal movements, using tools such as sandbags, such as medicine balls. All of these things can be used to foster these fundamental and foundational movements. What is IFET? IFET is culture. IFET is physical culture, a physical culture that Americans have been lacking for many, many years. Physical culture is a philosophy, a regime, or a lifestyle seeking maximum physical development through such means as resistance training, diet, aerobic activity, athletic competition, and mental discipline. The cognitive aspects of physical culture are very important. Physical culture can be traced back to the ancient Greeks, to Milo of Croton, who was given a calf when he was a child and every day lifted that calf, a story you've probably heard of as an explanation for progressive resistance training. The Greeks not only looked at the development of the physical body, but also looked at arete, or virtue, and the development of the spirit in their physical culture movement. Men sana in corpora sano, a sound mind in a sound body, was the Roman poet Juvenal's answer to what does it mean to have a fulfilled life. Physical culture in Roman times moved more towards warfare and gladiatorial combat and started to move away from the cognitive and the spiritual realms. And then as more of Rome became Christian, the idea of a physical self became looked at as more sinful and less desirable. This continued through the Dark Ages, the Middle Ages, up until the Italian Renaissance, at which point the artists started looking back at the Greek ideals of beauty to help to foster both the physical beauty as well as the beauty inside. You may have heard the term a Renaissance man. A Renaissance man is somebody who not only fences and is athletic and can do work, but somebody who also develops their mind through poetry and astronomy and mathematics, etc. After the Renaissance, we start seeing physical culture movements develop all throughout Europe. And they become very rooted in the idea of Volksgeist, or the idea of the people. And it's these physical culture movements that gave rise to the first gymnasiums and ultimately the fitness industry as we know it today. One of the most profound applications of this idea of physical culture is the physical culture badges from the Soviet Union. They had a motto of being ready for labor and defense. And similar to our president's physical fitness test, everybody had to achieve certain physical standards just as a regular citizen. People need to be led. 
You may be familiar with the book Tribes by Seth Grodin. So we encourage you to lead your clients, your gym, your people towards a new physical culture in America. Find your tribe, step up, and lead. It's not just about six-pack abs. It's not about dumbing it down to the lowest common denominator. It's about building that foundation of foundational and functional movements of reflexes and ultimately higher cognition. Many of the exercises in the IFET training may look extreme. They are difficult, but IFET has a program. It has a progression. We don't start off slamming clients with the hardest possible thing they could do. Instead, we move to help clients develop these physical attributes so that they too can be ready for labor and defense, so that we can move away from a sports culture and towards a true physical culture again in the United States. How do we do this? Fitness testing. Before people can move on to the next level of IFET, they need to pass certain specific merit badges or performance guidelines so that we know that they have set a reasonable foundation in health-related fitness and that their health-related fitness builds the foundation so that they can ultimately develop skill-related fitness. The concept of functional fitness in the fitness industry really isn't a new concept. 20, 30, 40 years ago, we talked about skill-related fitness, agility, balance, coordination, speed, power, reaction time. We didn't call it functional fitness. We simply knew that this was the manifestation of the health-related fitness that people develop. In IFET, we set a foundation of health-related fitness. We test, we use formative and summative evaluations, and then we build on that skill-related fitness, looking at those functional movement skills discussed earlier. In any type of fitness, in any endeavor, you have strategies, you have techniques, and you have tools. Certain tools are going to work better for certain techniques. The techniques that we choose are not the result. The techniques that we choose are pieces in the larger puzzle of our overall strategy to help our clients achieve their goals. In IFET, the strategy is periodization. It's a group-based curriculum, not a walk-in class. Instead, a curriculum that helps people develop their physical culture. Formative and summative evaluations are key in progressing through the IFAT levels. Techniques that we use, a constraints-based approach to skill learning, horizontal and vertical loading, metabolic resistance training, intervals and circuits, work capacity drills, and within week training variations, just to mention a few. Manipulating the acute variables can be done with many different techniques, but those techniques ultimately have to serve the larger strategy of the program. The tools, we use many body weight tools in cadence calisthenics, primitive movements, suspension, SAQ and plyometrics. We use external resistance, medicine balls, sandbags, dumbbells, barbells, kettlebells, Indian clubs, tires, hammers, ropes, and sleds. But these tools are nothing without techniques and without an overall strategy to put them together to help develop a physical culture in America and help our clients self-actualize. Any tool that we use should be done biomechanically efficiently, regardless of the tool, and any tool should be used relevantly, safely, and effectively. We're not just throwing a bunch of tools at you. It comes back to the foundational and the fundamental movements that we discussed earlier. Who is a candidate for IFET? Well, we've got non-believers, people who are indifferent, uninitiated believers, and hardcore participants in our country. 
Certainly the hardcore participants and the uninitiated believers are prime candidates for IFAT. Additionally, the message of physical culture can help turn people who are indifferent into believers. Balanced holistics, primarily female, are also a huge market for the IFAT training, as are the social competitors, mainly male. IFAT strives to create a physical culture rooted in research and tradition, to educate clients to see through the smoke and mirrors of consumer products and as seen on TV brands, to empower clients to self-actualize through mind, movement, and muscle, and to take back the fitness industry for the fitness professionals. Men's sauna and corpora sauna. Thank you very much. Special thanks to Diego, Suzanne, and Danielle for helping us out. It's very hot in here, so tonight it was Bikram IFET. Thanks a lot. I'm Vincent Mezzo, Director of Education for Kettlebell Concepts. If you are interested in the first IFET training, which we're launching in December here in New York City, go to tinyurl.com forward slash IFAT launch to get your special discounted price. These discounts in that code are on a very limited basis, so sign up early. That's tinyurl.com forward slash IFAT launch. Thanks a lot, guys. Have a great night.